In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I will go to the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Beloved in the Lord, during this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that prevents us from trusting in God and loving each other. Since it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of the Lord Jesus Christ on this night when he instituted this blessed meal for our salvation, it is proper that we complete our Lenten discipline by diligently examining ourselves, as St. Paul urges us to do. This holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst after righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death, from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us, for our benefit he became man so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God and to deliver us took upon himself our sin and the punishment we deserve. <coughs> so that we may more confidently believe this and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take heed, this is my body which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities, give myself into death, shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins, and to comfort and establish the New Testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. The pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification. Giving him our most heartfelt thanks, we take up our cross and follow him, and according to his commandment, love one another as he has loved us. As our Lord on this night exemplified this love by washing his disciples' feet, so we do, by our words and actions, serve one another in love. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink from this one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with the wine of many grapes and one bread from countless grains, so also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him, we love one another, not only in word, but in deed, and in truth. And the Almighty and merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, accomplished this in us. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins to him, imploring him for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. God, be merciful to you 
and strengthen your faith. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Let it be done for you as you believe. Stand by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stand by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. Greet one another in the peace of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we so may receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from Exodus. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the just decrees. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. And Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet as if were a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. He did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. The word of the Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians. The cup of blessing that we bless. Is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break. Is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread. We who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one bread. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, to depart out of this world to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. You are clean, not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That is why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. 
Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Now is the Son of Man glorified. God is glorified in him. God is glorified in him. God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, in a little while I am with you. You will seek me. Just as I said to the Jews, so now also I say to you, where I am going you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. name of Jesus. Amen. It was more than just a little surprising. It was downright offensive what Jesus did. There they are gathered on the joyous evening in the upper room. Maybe, maybe more than just the 12 disciples and Jesus, friends and others who were with them as companions along the way. Maybe. None of the crowds, though. Or maybe this was just time they had reserved for themselves, just the 13 of them, as if they were family, the disciples and their rabbi. Wine flowed freely. The joy of the evening was evident as they talked and laughed together. I imagine every now and again, Peter caught a glimpse of Jesus, looking a bit more contemplative than usual. It's as if some great weight was building up in Jesus' spirit, something troubling him. But then, if he did, Peter was interrupted by another of his uh, brother disciples sharing a humorous story, a remembrance of Passover celebrations long past, maybe, or, or maybe the time that one of them was the youngest at the meal at home and could finally ask the questions of their father concerning the very reason for the festival. You know, I don't know. 
I don't imagine this was the first Passover they had celebrated together, although, although we have a record only of this one. While most were from the same region up north around the Sea of Galilee, it's hard really to know what traditions they followed. We, we imagine, uh, when we read Passover, uh, a common set of practices and traditions somewhat similar to those observed by the Hebrew people across the globe today, with just broad differences. Although, like now, people from neighboring towns would would likely bring a different perspective to the Seder, bringing that which they held in common, but talking about, maybe even debating with one another, that which they did not hold in common. But I'm thinking this was, this evening was, at least to some degree, an unusual gathering for them. Even if it wasn't the first, they were still, as a group, working to establish the traditions that they would hold to, uh, they anticipated for many, many years together as kind of like an extended family. First, I imagine no one noticed. When Jesus got up from his place at the table, the formal Haggadah that we know today was still very much in its infancy, so likely lots of time throughout the evening for more casual interaction. But soon, more and more disciples took notice that Jesus was up and about guessing most were still talking in small groups. The silence spread as more and more of them saw what Jesus was doing, taking off his outer garment, readying a basin of water. I'm kind of picturing, you know, that one small group of two or three folks that can't seem to keep quiet and notice what else is going on. They're kind of still talking as if everybody's having a great time, don't realize that everybody else is silent. But then that, that group, oblivious, developments in the room. Maybe James or John, one of the so-called sons of thunder, was about to tell them, shh, be quiet. Jesus finally arrived, arrived there at the first disciple, bowl and water and towel in hand, and took to his knee. I am confident their shock and amazement was obvious. Over the years, they had gotten used to Jesus creating quite a stir, causing some problems, challenging them both by what he taught and by what he expected of them. But this, this was, well, just wrong. Expecting them to feed thousands, even though they made no provision for it, was one thing. This was quite another. It was actually offensive. What do you imagine was the first to receive the gift of Jesus washing his feet? Did he begin with John, you know, the youngest, just barely over being a child? Maybe it's one of those who usually stood to the side without receiving so much attention. Maybe Thaddeus or Bartholomew. Where was Judas in this equation? He was still in the room having not yet been sent out by Jesus. Remember the phrase, what you are going to do, go do now quickly. Now what we do have, of course, is Peter's objection. And while we might read this as some dramatic display Peter dreams up for everyone else's benefit, I actually choose to receive his objection in the time and the place where it is offered. That is, Peter's right. What Jesus is doing just isn't right. It's not only making everyone uncomfortable, it's causing offense. No disciple of any rabbi or master would ever let his master do this. There they sat, letting him. They may not have afforded servants for the purpose, and while others might volunteer to serve in one capacity or another, you know, getting up to get more food or wine, this just wasn't done. And I'm not making a hyperbo hyperbolic statement. It literally just wasn't ever done. They sit in stunned silence, wondering what their master was trying to teach them. Is he trying to make them feel guilty? that none of them had taken him up on the offer first, but they don't ever remember being asked. You see, we do well to remember 
just how offensive, shocking this behavior was on the part of Jesus. Now, we could spend many, many minutes, hours actually, discussing and debating, studying and researching of what happens in the upper room. Of course, then Jesus adds this punchline. I have given you an example that you should do just as I have done Christian theologians of every type and description, amateur and professionals alike, academics and those that just open their Bible for a quick read, have contemplated this action and the direction given by Jesus to his disciples. You know, that Super Bowl commercial this last winter, uh, by the He Gets Us folks, it just added fuel to the fire in my Facebook groups, but I have quite a few theological groups I'm a part of. Some objected to the notion of this being an accurate vision of washing the disciples' feet and how best to imagine Christian folks receive the least of these. I don't know. Commercial kind of combined this event with the whatever you do for the least of these in Matthew's gospel. Kind of like seems a natural combination. Maybe not. We could debate. But Here's where I would like to go in conclusion this evening. You've heard it said, the best defense is a good offense. More than one commentator will observe that over the coming days while announcing Sweet 16 or Elite 8 games. I couldn't get that play of words out of my head as I considered what I would share with you today, that Jesus caused such great offense. So two words, defense and offense that can mean many different things. So first, defense. In this case, not so much a response to an objection, but rather a defense, an explanation, a discussion of that which we believe. A good defense is a clear statement of what an individual believes and what the church teaches. You know, the word apology can also be used to describe a theological defense of that which would otherwise be in dispute. The best defense is a clear confession of that which we hold to be true, that which God has given us, including Jesus' command to us this evening. That second word, offense. Now I refer not to an offense, as in an action which causes difficulty or disagreement, like getting up from table and taking the role of a servant, but rather offense, as in an intentional action designed to accomplish a specific goal. See, the best defense is a good offense. That is, the best way to clearly confess the faith which we have been given the best way to clearly demonstrate the nature of the one whom we worship and adore, even Jesus Christ, is to follow the example our Lord has given us this evening. Take on the very nature of a servant. To do that which simply needs to be done if, and especially if, beneath our station, our place. To serve. To serve all of those in hunger, need, or want. No, not just when we may gain from it. But actually, maybe even especially, when we, like Jesus this evening, are anticipating a time of difficulty or hardship and pain. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As you're able, please stand and join me in prayer. As we enter into the mystery of our salvation during these three great days, let us pray for new life in the church and new hope in the world and all who are in need. For the church, 
that it would proclaim the love of Christ by demonstrating in word and deed its love for one another and its care for the earth. Lord, in your mercy, for the world, the strife and tension so evident in the news each day would be resolved by leaders blessed with your wisdom and a, and a desire for peace. Lord, in your mercy, for all who are in need, that the followers of Christ would serve those who are suffering, learning from Christ's example as a servant of all. Lord, in your mercy, for all the members of this congregation and community, and especially those preparing for baptism, that these three days might be a living experience of the body of Christ who promises to meet us always in the bread and wine of the Holy Supper. Lord, in your mercy, the faithful departed, with whom we are united in a holy communion, that our voices may join with theirs in the unending hymn of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, we offer you these prayers, O God, in the shadow of the cross, in the hope of the Paschal Feast to come, and in the name of Jesus Christ, who endured the cross and grave. Amen. Let us pray. God of glory, receive these gifts and the offering of our lives. As Jesus was lifted up from the earth, draw us to your heart in the midst of this world, that all creation may be brought from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, and from death to life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Having come into the world, he fulfilled for us your holy will and accomplished our salvation. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you, is do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, 
which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, is do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and his promise to come again, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We implore you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, that we and all who share in the body and blood of your Son, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be sanctified in soul and body, and have our portion with all your saints. O glory and honor is yours, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Come to the banquet God has prepared, Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. As often as we eat of this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Lord God, in the wonderful sacrament you have left us a memorial of your suffering and death. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the way we live will proclaim the redemption you have brought. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit. In his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. Savior all the day long. Perfect submission my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may put off the old self with all sinful deeds, put on the new, after your own image is created in true righteousness and holiness, that when the earthly tent in which we dwell is destroyed, we may not be found naked, may receive the clothing of a house not made with human hands, eternal in the heavens. Now you live forever and ever. 